start by recreating our subnetting steps. So what was the first step? Oh no, you need to find out how many hosts you have. Well, you need to determine the number of hosts that you need. You're my ass. Uh, I got that written down in the steps. You had it on the board the other day. Oh, you started with the largest subnet. I knew that. <laughs> It has to be. You yeah. can't send that without always it. Be. Now, even if that means you have to make up an arbitrary number, then that's what you have to do. But uh, so, what's the second step? Then you find the number of hosts that you need. You run away. Yeah, run away. <laughs> then you find the subnet address. We'll start this one with a major network number of 10, 0, 0, 0, slash 8. Step one, find the largest subnet. 40, 40. 40. We already know how many hosts we're going to use. So we need to figure out what subnet mask is going to let us have 40 hosts in our network. So how many bits do we need to get 40 hosts? Two in the last octet. That would be 26. Oh, yeah, yeah, 26. We need 26 bits. Yeah. So you're saying we need six host bits? Which would be yes. two. So two to the sixth is. Right, that gives us 40. So what would our mask be? If we're going to use a slash 26, what would that be in decimal? 190, or 192. Right, it would be 255, 255, 255, 192. So, where do the network bits stop and the host bits start? The 64 is the last uh, network bit. Yeah. Right there, right? Right at the so we have 26 network bits, so the four, third octet gets us up to 24, 25, 26. So we know that the network number 
has what for host bits? The network number always has zeros in the host bits. So what are we going to use for the numbers in the network portion for our first subnet? We're just going to keep it the same, right? So we always start with our major network number. And then, so that's our, our network number here is just 10 again. And really we don't even need to work that one out. Again, the first subnet is always going to start with our major network number. And so the next part of this step is to find the broadcast address. So how do we find the broadcast address? All ones. All ones in the host bits. Right. All ones in the host bits. What about the network portion of our broadcast address? Uh, increment it by one. No, you don't change it. Yeah, same or same. Always get that one. So what is that number going to be 63. in decimal? 63. And then the usable range we give by right. Like a sandwich, we just go up from the network number down to the broadcast number, fill in the meaty goodness in the middle. Awesome. The next one would have to be sixty-three would be the low number, right? Right. Well. 63 can't be used again. 64. 63 is part of this subnet. That's right. Okay, so it has to be 64. Well, we're going to check and see. <clears throat> so we've gone through our five steps for the first subnet. So for the second one, what's the next largest subnet? 30. So we already know how many of those. So what subnet mask? Allows us to have 30 hosts. So Saying slash 27. Yeah. So that would be how many host bits? Uh, three. Well, fifth be three in that last. What's two to the fifth? 32. Right. So that gives us enough. So what if we wanted to write our subnet mask in decimal? It would be 24. Yeah. Right, it would be 255, 255, 255, dot 224, because we would have three ones in the last octet. Or you just minus 27 from 255, right? No. I'm just confusing myself. So, 27, the 27 tells us that we have 27 network bits. So we have 8 in the first octet, 16, 24, 25, 26, 27. So our new subnet mask is here for the second octet. So again, we know the network number has all zeros in the host bits. Now here's where we get the, to the tricky part. We have to increment our <coughs> network number by one. We want to get the next lowest network number, but we can't overlap with our 63 that we've already used. Zero, one, zero. Yeah. Right. If we're looking at the subnet bits, we had zero, zero, 001. In the previous one, we need to get the next usable number, so we just go up by 1 to 0, 1, 0. So everything else should be the same over here. What about the broadcast number? So what are these two numbers in decimal? 64 
Right, the next one. So we've only got one subnet left. We know it's 25 hosts. We need to find a subnet mask. The same one will give us um, the right amount of hosts, um, which makes this easy because the line stays in exactly the same place. We know that the network number has all zeros in the host bits. So we need to increment our subnet bits by one. So what, what were the subnet bits in the previous address? Zero, one, zero. Zero, one, zero. And we need to go up by one. Zero, one, zero, one. So... What was that? And then how do we get the broadcast number? Now, if we look at the numbers that we used, remember some of the tests that I talked about to verify this? <coughs> the network numbers have to be even. 0, 64, 96, so they're all even. And if you go from one subnet to the next, 63 to 64, 95 to 96, so there's no wasted addresses in between. So we got it right. Cool. Now, every time we, we just... Uh, like once we've got the broadcast number, and then uh, we always say, you know, well, we know the next one's going to be one up, the next network number is one up from the last broadcast number. Mm -hmm. You say we have, to, we have to make sure of that. Is there ever a situation where it will not be the next incremented number? Yes. When you do your subnetting wrong. <laughs> I mean, when it's done correctly. So then it's safe to assume that even without doing that, that we know uh, the next number is going to be, the, the next network number is going to be one up from the last, from the previous broadcast. Right. But even knowing that, you can't get any farther than the network number without doing the other steps. Right. Because you still need the subnet mask before you can find the broadcast address. Now, if we take a look at Well, sometimes it's, it's helpful to point out patterns that can be recognized, but sometimes it's better to let you find the patterns on your own. That's when the light bulb usually clicks. What's, what's the pattern for those of us whose light bulb hasn't clicked? Well, <laughs> what I was going to point out was that if you took... So these bits over here are host bits, right? Um, so we'll just make a big line there. So these were, these bits were always host bits. Our network bits were defined by this number, so it's always right here. And then what's left in the middle is our subnet bits. Now if we took all the subnet bits in the chart and we wrote them out, we'd get zeros all the way down here and here, but if we look at the last three, we had three zeros, then we had zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one. And basically we're just 
counting. Oh, yeah, you do have liquid flux, that's right. So when we're trying to find our, although in reality these two bits weren't included, but we just are counting in binary here, which is our network numbers here. So if you were to take, if you cut off the host bits of all your network numbers <coughs> and wrote them out in binary, they would just count up one, two, three, four, basically. Can we do another one? And sure. I have some basic questions which I could ask about this one or the next one. Um, I'm confused in the beginning about how there's, using the one that's on the board, there's one, uh, one that needs 40 hosts, one that needs 25, and one that needs 30. Um, for the 40, why did you do slash 26? And for the 25 and the 30, you both did slash 27. Are you, aren't, I'm confused about how I'm supposed to count over. If you could explain okay. that, I'm sorry. So this is part of our subnet mask, okay. right? Which right. We need enough host bits to get 40. Mm -hmm. So if I was just using this bit only, just one bit, okay. how many hosts can I have? Um, eight, right? Because each... One bit. Just oh. One bit, how many um, are there? One. Well, there's, like, there's basically zero, because you have two numbers, and you need a network number and a broadcast number, which are taken up, so there's none left for usable hosts. Okay. So if my mask is here, there's really zero usable, so we're never going to use that mask. Okay. So if I come here, if I have two bits, how many possible hosts can I have? If you use two bits, you can have two. Right. So there's there's four total possible combinations because it's it's two squared total combinations, which is four, and then we have to subtract our two to get our usable number, so we get two usable hosts. Okay. And we're trying to get to forty usable hosts. So if we move over again, now we have four, or I'm sorry, not four squared. 2 to the 4th, no, 3rd, <clears throat> now I'm messing myself up, because we've got 3 bits, 2 to the 3rd is 2 times 2 times 2, so 4 times 2 is 8, and then we have to subtract 2 to get our usable number, so we get 6, still not enough. So we move over again, this time we have 2 to the 4th because we're using four bits. So two times two is four, times two is eight, times two again is 16, minus two, because we have two that aren't usable, so we get 14, still not enough. Move over again, two to the fifth is gonna be twice that, 32, minus two again, 30 usable, Still not enough. Move over one more time. 2 to the 6th is 64, because we're doubling again. Minus 2. So we get 62 usable hosts, which is enough to get 40 out of. So this is where our subnet mask is going to be. And that's 26 places from the left? Yes. Okay. In all 8 octets. Okay. That was like, that was perfect. Now, now I understand what you're doing. Thank you. So if you want to, if you want to get, <clears throat> you want to do that, then you just minus two from the number that's to the left. So. Minus 2 from the 2 
to that, zero, just put zero to one. Right, that's one of those patterns that yeah. I don't tell you, but people figure out. So if we were going to write the number of usable hosts in each place, <coughs> what you do is you take this number, subtract two, and that's going to go in this spot. So two minus two is zero, four minus two, two. is two, eight minus two is Six. six, 16 minus 2 14. is 14, 30, 30 62, 126, and then this one would be 254. See, well, what's going to happen is we have our final in uh, my 18th century tomorrow, and I just did the homework on that yesterday. And in this question, he asked, because I got, I got confused after doing the subnet, because he asked how many hosts could you have? And of course, I'm doing the subtracting too, but he didn't say usable hosts. Right. And like right this is how many usable hosts you can have. Because you can't use the uh -huh. network number in the broadcast. So how would you do it to find the number of hosts, not the usable number of hosts? You just, just don't, don't subtract, subtract the two. Okay. So you all can, these numbers would be too higher. You can use every IP okay. address in that range except for the, the network number, which would be all zeros, and the broadcast number. So that's why you subtract two because you can't use they're not usable. But if it just asks for the total number of hosts, you would include those two. But if it asks for usable hosts, you just subtract two. Okay. Let's do one that's fan block. That was actually the next one in my uh, notes. I thought you were about to say let's do one in Spanish. Yes, I heard that too. I was just like, oh, how are you gonna do that in Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> one time, one time, we're doing English. Yeah, still mad. Yeah. I'm having a hard time doing it in English. Communicating. So how do you say 26 in Spanish? Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. You said we're starting with one as our usable number? Ten. Ten. <laughs> it looks scary, but it's not. All the steps are the same, just bigger numbers in your multiplication. That's my can response from now on. You can use as much scratch paper as you want. <laughs> because when in our field will we ever not have some form of technology? When you're taking a certification exam? I really don't even want to. Some of them won't. I can't do this. Sure you can. The trick is now we need to expand our chart because we're not dealing in one octet anymore. Yeah, I just wrote this. <laughs> I know, right? I just wrote my stuff now. Let's keep looking at them all You can keep the one you wrote, the difference is you just need two of them because we're dealing with two octets here, or we're going to. Are we going to fund this in our test anywhere? Probably. Please tell me not. I feel like that's a firm possibility. Well, on your final in this class, the subnetting final, I think I use numbers like 15,000, yeah. 50,000. Yeah. Why would you do that? I better just so, because it's could you like somehow just take out the zeros and put them back on like at the end of the last step? That little yeah. trick like that. It's much easier than you think though to do this. So, all right. We need 5,000 hosts, right? That's our largest subnet. We know how many we need. So we need to find a subnet mask that gives us 5,000 hosts. So, 
we got our third and our fourth octets here. And the reason we have both is because we know that if we're talking about usable hosts, we said this only goes to 254, right? Right. So, um, for the sake of our math, let's put it back to 256, which is the total number of possible hosts in one octet. So, if we were to add one more bit to that, so now we have nine bits, how many total possible hosts do we get? 256 times 2. Right. Which is? It's 512. You're going to remember these numbers eventually. <laughs> right, so then it's 1024, 20, 48, 40, 96, <coughs> and we don't even need to do the next one because we know it's big enough. Because obviously if we had 4,000 and we double it, we're going to be over 5,000, right? You sure? Over 9,000. So our mask is going to be right here. So if that's where our mask is at, how do we write that in CIDR notation? Um, right, because here, this is the middle dot in our IP address, so that's 16 bits, because we already had two octets, so 8, 16, 17, 18, 19 bits over, so our mask is a slash 19. So... <laughs> you'll, you'll memorize those numbers eventually from use. It's easy. Yeah. Alright, so... <laughs> see? See? So our first network number, what's the, uh, the rule for that? It's going to be the same. Right, the only thing we're changing is our subnet mask, so it's still going to be... 10, 0, 0, 0, and it's going to be that over here too, 10 dot 0 dot zeros and zeros. <coughs> so our network number stayed the same, 10s, we just changed our mask to a 19 to give us the host we needed. So now how do we get our broadcast number? One is all the hosts. All of them. Yep. Right. So... This is why you start your numbers over in the next octet instead of doubling them like we did for usable hosts. Um, you'll see why. So this part stays the same. We're not changing our network bits. We're only changing our host bits. So what was this octet? And what's the last octet? Okay, so our broadcast is going to be 10.0.31.255. Because we just took our mask, we changed all the host bits to ones, and then we just add them up in octets like we normally do. So this octet here is 31, and then the last octet is 255. Wait, so we don't need to add them? No. That's all this. There's no... One is a network number, one is a broadcast number. If you follow my subnetting steps, you will never and. How do we use range G so point, well, point one to Well, let's talk about the usable range. So you're right, it's gonna be ten zero zero one because that's the first possible number. So what is the next highest number we can get after under our broadcast? Ten thirty to two fifty four? No, it's thirty two. Ten dot zero dot thirty two one. It'd be two five four, right? I know it's two already, I know it's all right. Let's, be let's look at it. Let's look at it in binary. We've already got it in binary. So if we wanted to make this whole number one smaller, what would I change? It'd be thirty-two fifty-four. I would change this to a zero. Yeah. So it would still be thirty-one two fifty-four. I thought you were looking for the next network number. I was like, it's thirty-two. Yeah. So that's the usable range. Mm -hmm. 
I know the one. All and all, all I had to do was take this number and go up by one, and take this number and go down by one. And that's, we already have those numbers in binary. And actually, here's, a, here's a, another recognizable pattern. To find the usable range, if I have these numbers written in binary, all I have to do is take these last two bits and change them to a 1 and a 0. And that be turns these two numbers into our usable range instead of the network of broadcast numbers. Because all I had to do was add 1 to the network number and subtract 1 from the broadcast number. Usable range. Okay, so now things are going to get a little trickier. But we're still using all the same steps. So we need to find the next largest subnet. 1,000 hosts. We know how many hosts we need. We need a subnet mask that gives us 1,000 hosts. 17. 17 would be here. The last one would be 21. So we said that here we could get 256 hosts, right? Yeah. So the next one is 512, and then this one is 1024, which is enough, right? Because we need 1,000. This one is 1,024. So it's going to be right here. So we've got two bits left here. Our network number has all zeros in the host bits. Which balls me? You put the 256 uh -huh. underneath the 128. How'd you do that? Mm -hmm. Because that's how many total possible hosts there are in that column. Oh, you mean like if, if all of those were all ones? Right. Then you could get 256 hosts, of course, minus the two. Right. Okay. So here we can get 512 possible hosts using this column. So this one lets us get 1,024 possible hosts, which is enough for the 1,000 that we need in our subnet. So what is this mask in CIDR notation? To count from the right instead of the left. Yeah, we've got 10 bits for host bits, so if we just subtract 10 from 32, we we'll get the CIDR subnet mask. All right, so now the tricky part. We need to take our subnet bits and increment them by one to get the next possible number. So let's just use here to here as our subnet bits. So we've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Right, that's the next possible number. So we come up with 10.0.0.0.0.0. Okay, so what is that number in decimal? Now, again, our check here, we ended with 31.255. The next possible number is 32.0. Make sense? No? <laughs> if you look at the binary I've got up here, so this is our 31.255, our broadcast number. So if we were just looking at this as one long string of binary and we wanted to find the next possible number, we would make the same change that we did up here because 
well, I changed those around, but it was all ones up to here. So, no matter how many we have, if a string of binary is all ones, the next possible number is going to be one column longer than that. So the next one would be um, 10.0.0.0.1.1.0.0. 10 well, not necessarily. We have to find our broadcast number first before we can look at what the next one will be. So how do we find the broadcast number? All ones in the host bits. Right, all ones in the host bits. And what about the network bits? They stay the same. So now we need to convert that number into decimal. So we've got 32 plus 2 is 34, plus 1 is 35. So then it would be 32.1 to 35.254. Score. <coughs> He said the reason that these sheets didn't help me is because I, they didn't take into account the um, previous. Changed. Okay. And is that where you got the slash 22 for the next one? Well, that was based on the thousand hosts that we needed. Oh, okay. So where did you, you just incorporated from where you left off from the last one? To continue, I'm trying to see where where you use from the last one for the next one. Okay. First, we have found that this is our new, this is our slash 22, okay. our subnet mask. So, the bits that identify which subnet we're in are from this line over to this line, but we don't need to go that far. Okay. So it's we're going to basically go from here to the decimal. So if we looked at the previous number from this line to this decimal, we had 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 right here. And what we need to do for the next network number is find the next possible number from here without wasting anything in between. So we want to just go up by one from this. Okay. And so this, if we just looked at this string by itself in binary, we would have it would look like this. So we had four plus two plus one is seven. So the next one we want needs to equal eight, which is that which is what we put in here when we went up by one. So we took this number and we went up by one to get this number. Okay. And then that would be the new address that you start with for the next. Okay. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Ready for the last one? 500. <coughs> right, we know that we can get 256 from the, this octet. So just by adding one extra bit, we double that to 512, <coughs> which is enough for 500. So it's going to be here. So that is a slash 23 because we got 9 bits for host, so 32 minus 9, 23. The network number is all zeros. <clears throat> okay, so now again we need to increment our subnet bits by 1. So we're going to take everything from the line 
to the decimal. In the last number, we had 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So we want to go up. Can I back you up a little bit? How did you get 23 again? I'm sorry. We need 500 hosts. Right. If we use one octet, we can have 256 hosts. Right. When we add one more bit, we double the possibilities. Right. So 256 times 2 is 512, right. which is enough to get 500. Right. So our mask is here because this is how many bits we need to get 500 possible combinations for hosts. Right. You're using 9 bits, so 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Right. This is 23 bits over from the left okay, side of the you. number. Okay. So if we, if you, instead of using a line, if you wrote the subnet mask out, you would have 23 ones, and then the rest would be zeros. Like you said, I take my nine, I think since there's nine zeros, and the spot of it minus that's 32, it comes up to 23. Right. Okay. So how do we get this number from our, our broadcast number? We took the subnet portion of it. Yep. Down here, we need to go up by just one. Zero, so how do we... One, zero, zero, one, zero? All right, because if we, if we put our column headers here, this number is equal to 16 plus 1, 17. So we want 18. So 16 and 2 give us 18. So these bits are going to be 0, 0, 1... Zero, zero, one, zero. So what is that number in decimal? 36. 36. And then our broadcast number, we're going to turn all the host bits into ones. 7255. So it's going to be 36.1 to 37.254. Oh. Yeah. And we're done. Yeah. And we can run our checks. All the network numbers are even, all the broadcast numbers are odd. And we went from 31,255 to 32,0, 35,255,36,0, so we didn't waste anything in between the subnets either. <coughs> So yeah, rolling back the drivers actually did work. <laughs> start with a 172 address, and we're going to submit this out. So we're going to go smaller now, right? Kind of. No. A little bit of a mix. <laughs> so we need to start with our largest subnet, which is 500, so we know how many hosts. So we need to find the subnet mask that lets us have 500. We've already done that a few times before. Mm -hmm. 
So slash 23, because we know the fourth octet will give us 256 hosts. We add one bit, so we double it. We get 512. 512 is plenty for 500. Yeah, let's go a little slow. Yeah, I'm still copying down. I have some that are uh, personal sized. We need 500, so we know 512 <coughs> is um, 1. Okay, cool. <coughs> That'd be slash 23. So the reason why we got slash 23 is. <coughs> Because we went um, we minus uh, 32 9. <laughs> I gotta do it, man. That's right. the way I gotta do it. I mean, it might take a long time, I gotta do it that way. Okay, so. Yeah, because there's 32. No, There's 32. Really? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this whole panel's gonna lynch your ass. <laughs> okay. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I was just starting to write order. Um, do you would you go 500 to 100, or do you have to stay on the same router <laughs> at a time? We'll, we'll do that in a second. But let's finish this first subnet, and then we'll talk about which one's next. Okay. So we all good with the slash 23, <coughs> understand where that came from. We need 500 hosts. A slash 23 subnet mask gives us 512 possible. So network number, we know that it's all zeros in the host bits. What about the network portion of our network number? So. Um, that would be uh, 172.16.0.0. Right. We're going to start with the same network number that we have up here for our largest subnet. Right. Yeah, network number that we have up here for our largest subnet. Right. That's always going to be the case. So your largest subnet is going to have the same network number as your major network number. Okay. So we've got 172.16. Zero, zero. Now we want to find, we found the network number, which was just our major network number. We need to find the broadcast number. All ones in the host bits. <coughs> That's 256, right? We can never have 256. <laughs> what about the network portion? It stays the same. Okay. That's one. Yeah, it's 1.255. No, because there's a, there's a dot there. All of that's. Okay, so the subnet mask is... I'm, I'm still adding one more thing, right? The subnet mask is the 172.1600. Oh, no, sorry, the 2.3. Right, this is, our subnet, this is our subnet mask. Right. The, is the one to the left, the 172.1600, that's the network number and broadcast number, right? It's just the network number. Just the network We're number. finding the broadcast number okay. now. So to get our broadcast number, we put all ones in our host bits, and when we add that up, we get 172, 16, 1, 255. Right here at this octet, we just have 1, and then 255. So what would our usable range look like? So the one, so, 
So the one, or next to the two five five, is one because it's it's the, it's the divider between the dot. So the one is the one, and then two five five to the right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm actually like really not just spinning my wheels and trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, so uh, so so now our range <clears throat> the range is based on um, that's that's dot and zero dot one because it's going to be one higher than what we start off with. Right. And then 254 is just minus 1 from the, the broadcast number. Right. And you're right. That's <laughs> <laughs> totally fair. I'm going to get this before the day's over. It's going to be a long day. No. Oh. All right, so <laughs> we've got the first one completed. So we need to start our steps again. So what's the next largest subnet? 100. Right, so we have 100 hosts, so we need to find the subnet mask that will let us have 100 possible. So you're saying right here? So what would that be in CIDR notation? That would be 25. So remember, to get the number of hosts here, you can look at the number before it. So here we actually get 128 possible hosts, which is enough for 100. But why would you go to the right? Why don't we, why don't we just start off in the first one like we would normally do? Well, the, the first one gives us 256 possibilities. The 128 is the value of this column, not the number of the, possibilities. The, the 256 would be wasting, right? Yeah. That's why we're not doing that. Crazy okay. deal. Whenever you, once you've done that first subnet, whenever you go to the next subnet and you look at the subnet mask, it has nothing to do with what you just did. The only way you find subnet, the subnet, the new subnet mask is the number of hosts you need. You yeah. Have to, so, okay. The net, now once we do the network number for this uh, subnet, it's going to have to be the one we just did before. The subnet mask has nothing to do with it. <coughs> so now we minus um, the 7. Minus 7 from 32, right? Right. Gotcha. That's how we got slash 25. Right. Okay. So our subnet mask is slash 25 or 255, 255, 255 dot 128 will give us 100 hosts that we need. So let's figure out the network number here. We know that the host bits are always zero in the network number. Okay, so this is where we need to look at just the subnet bits. So we're going to go from here to over here. So our last number was that. Three. Right, which is three. So we want four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the top, the top line here is really just going. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Never mind. I was about to ask where you got that from, but now it's because that was the network number, right? The broadcast number of our last <laughs> right. range. The, I just keep, because you didn't put the dot in there. That's why. right. Right. So. so when I do this. What I'm looking at are these numbers. So I got this number here, and I'm trying to get this number, which will be the next possible number. 
So you're just looking at all of the host bits. So you're just counting no. them, right? Yeah. As, as you go down. The host bits are on the right of our sub. I mean, I, I'm in the network bits. I'm sorry. Well, I'm looking at the network these bits. These are the subnet bits. The network bits are the first 16. Well, right. I mean, okay. When we're subnetting, I mean, there's three portions to the address, I not mean. two anymore. Right, right, right. But that's what I always mean. <laughs> these are not host bits. Right. So these numbers. We're going to go up here. Like that. Mm -hmm. So what is that number in decimal? Five is well. No, well, I'm, I'm adding in. <laughs> uh, it's a binary number. Uh, it's 2.0, right? Yeah, I keep, so I keep wanting to like... The submit thing I mean, no, it's submit so how do we get our broadcast number? All ones and All ones those bits. <clears throat> so we're going to keep our network bits and our subnet bits the same. Okay. And we're going to make these 1. 192. That's 63. That's 127. Oh, yeah. It's going to be <coughs> 2 dot 1 to 2 dot one point six. Yeah, making several mistakes. So what is our usable range? <coughs> 2 dot 1 to 2 oh. dot 26. Right, we just go one up from our network number to, and then one less from our broadcast number. So we're getting there. I think it's the water pipes and hope that thing don't explode already. Yeah. At least I'm sitting on this side of the class. Yeah. I'll get all the sewage. Just make sure you open that drain if it does happen. Yeah. Yeah, what was this room before? This was a... The second bathroom. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure what it was. Official. It was like a food service program, but basically it was like how to cook for a lot of people at once, like a cafeteria person does, you know. That so explains why this, that, was that, was that drain was like the drain for a huge like frying it's machine. All the colors. Well, I was thinking there. No one no, makes it sounds like I got a huge like sulfur this with uh, uh, green, <laughs> yellow, and red are the most. That's, that's why this tile is here, Especially and that's why there's all these big drains in the floor. So Basically, there used to be lots of mass cooking yeah. equipment in here. It was a killing room. <laughs> slaughterhouse. Yeah, the slaughterhouse. <laughs> That's it still is the sweater. Yeah. <laughs> they call me the butcher. Alright, so find our next largest subnet. 75. We know how many hosts, so we need a subnet mask that will give us 75 usable hosts. Right, it's still going to be in the same place. Could be slash 25. So our network number is going to have zeros here. And we know that the first 16 bits are never going to change. So it's still going to be 172, 16 for everything. So now it's time to do this again. So we want to get from So we need to go from here to the next possible number. Right, just go up by one. So why did you go on one on the other one? We did. 
It was one zero zero one zero zero. Well, one that's because one. one is a well, one. Well, these zero, yeah. one. okay. The colors are a single subnet, yeah. so within one of these colored pairs, we can only change the host bits because we're talking about the same network. Now, between networks is where the network bits are going to change. That's why within these boxes where we're changing bits, it's two different colors because it's two different networks. Okay. One of the things that's throwing me off is I'm trying to do this chart you're doing, but I keep adding a subnet mask in there. I was actually <laughs> writing the subnet mask, and I was like, why does mine look different? Yeah, see, the, that's, you know, do the method of subnetting that works best for you, but I've been using this for a long time, and it works for me, but, you know, it's basically network number, broadcast, network, Network broadcast and the subnet mask is represented by the line. Okay, so we've gone up by one. So what is our network number going to be in decimal? That is two dot one twenty eight. Okay, and then we need to get a broadcast number. Then we still got to do that point to point connection to that thing. We got 50 still. Uh, all right, so let's keep going. Next largest subnet is 50. We know how many hosts, so we need a subnet mask that gives us 50 possible hosts. 64. So we moved over one. Twenty. Two. 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 And also over here we know that this is going to be 172, 16. All this information can be filled in before we even do anything. Right. And then this middle part is the actual work. Yeah. So. Um, what was our subnet mask in solid <coughs> location? One, uh, that's uh, 26. Right, we left 6 host bits, so 32 minus 6 gives us 26. Mm -hmm. Or if we count from the left, we're 26 bits over. <coughs> so, we need to find the next network number. So we're going to do another one of these, where we need to increase that by one. So this time we've got zero, 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 one, two. So that's the number we're dealing with, and we need to increase it by one. So we'll go one, 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 one. So we can put those bits in here. Whoops. So what's our network number? Uh, this is dot uh, three. And then dot zero zero. Okay. And our broadcast number? That's the binary number in that, in that octet. We had a 2 and a 1. Gives us 3 in that octet. That's just simple as that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then our usable range? B dot 3, 1 to 3. Then 
there's still one more, right? Yeah. There is still right, one more. There's actually two more. No, we did the 75, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. there should be one more. Mm -hmm. between that's, the that's point. Right, so just one more. So uh, that's be between router one and two, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We only need four of those. So four we need four total, two usable. So what's our mass going to be? It's always going to be slash 30 on a point-to-point -point connection like this. So anytime you see something connecting just two devices, it's going to be slash 30 every single time. So again, we know we're going to have 172, 16 here, 172, 16, zeros and ones. So now we're going to have to take this portion and find the next possible number. So we That's what we've got. I took off all the leading zeros this time. One, zero, one. <laughs> one, it'd be one, one, zero. So we've got Okay, so what is our network number? Uh that is three dot Sixty-nine, sixty-seven, or wait, yeah, sixty-seven. The yeah. network number. We still haven't found the network number yet. <gasps> oh, oh, my bad. Huh? It's three dot uh, sixty-four. I'm still looking at that. Well, yeah, I was looking last at the broadcast. One. Okay, what's the broadcast number? Sixty-seven, sixty-seven. Yeah. And the usable range? Sixty-five, sixty-six. And. If you look at that again, it's 64, 65, 66, 67, because there's only four numbers total in a slash 30. So mm -hmm. we actually don't even have to do the, the subnetting on that one. You can just count up the next four numbers, but it's nice to see how it's supposed to work. So now we really are done. Okay, give us another problem. We're going to change, change problem types. I'm going to say Let's just make a deal. We don't want to see that again. Nice and long. <laughs> see what again? Well, it'll be on some of the questions of the day, probably. Yeah. How to find the number of, like, given an IP address and a submit. Oh, that's like shenanigans. Oh, yeah. Oh, it has a corrupt file. Oh, okay. Really? How many submits and how many corrupt files? Mine's been working fine. I've been working fine. I've been working fine. A long time. It's like, how you find it. Opera has a corrupt file. Out of that, what we do, how you find it. Nothing. Which one? Yeah. Yeah. So again, this is the website I use for the question for the day. It's subnettingquestions.com. All right, so let's do this one together. The last valid host on the subnet 172.20.96.0 slash 21. So first, let's look at the question, last valid host. So what are they asking for? The last usable host. Right, so we, we need to find the usable range, and the last number from the usable range will be the answer. So before we do any of that, Let's follow our steps and find the network number first. Yeah. So how can we find the network number here? They gave it to you. Yeah. You got to write the subnet down. Well, yeah. We have to and in this case. Yeah, we have to do 255. 
So, well, I'll just write it. I was like, good. I was like, how's he writing on those? He's like, oh crap. I'm writing on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> which, which octet is, uh, is a slash 21 in? The, so the third octet. Alright, so we're only going to deal with the third octet because the rest doesn't really matter. Uh, so. It was fun. <laughs> Four C40, isn't it? So, how do we show 96 in binary? 4 is too big. 128 is too big. 1, 64 plus 32 is 96. Now, where, if we're in the third octet, where is slash 21 going to fall? Well, first, what's right here? 16. Right, this is 16, and we're trying to get to 21. It's going to be under the 8, uh, yeah. so all the way up to the 8. So it's going to be right here. Yeah. So our subnet mask goes to there, so it's 1. Why did you get 16? Because there's 16 bits before that third octet. We're in the third octet, That's so okay. I was trying to show you that there's 16 bits. So if we added those two numbers together, we would actually get the same number again. So this is the network number. We didn't know that for sure before, but the network number is 96. I should have left it up there. But. Okay, so we've got 172, 20. So that's our network number. I wrote up the last two octets in binary, like we've been doing. Our subnet mask, we said, was where? In the 8 column. It's right there because we had 16. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah. So the that mask falls there. So now what would our broadcast number be? Almost. 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 So it'd be 16, 76 is 13, so it should be at 103. 103. 103, 253. So, first we had 172, 20, 96, 0, 21. Now we're saying our broadcast number is 172, 20, 103, 203 255. 255. So it'd be 90. So now we're at the usable range. So, what is the last number from the usable range? 103.254. Awesome stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got it on. <clears throat> what about you, Drew? Oh, yeah. All right, let's try another one. Uh, I don't want to do another last ballot. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Yeah, see? <laughs> That's what was coming up the other day. Alright, so how many subnets and hosts per subnet can we get from that network number with this subnet mask? So again, we're going to have to write things out in binary. So let's first write out... <laughs> no. They gave you the subnet mask. This is the subnet they mask. You the binary. So if we wanted to convert the subnet mask to CIDR, which is what we've been working with, what would it be? 24, 26, 26, yeah. Right, because we'd have eight ones, then another eight ones, and then 192 is one, one, and zeros. So we'd have... 26 bits here, or 32 minus 6, which is... So, this is basically a slash 26 mask for us, okay? So, what we need to do now is write out... When you have a question like this, you need to write out your network number 
in binary. The whole thing? Yes. So what's 192? Two ones and the rest of the zeros. Okay. And then now convert 168 to binary. Uh, Three ones. Good try. Twenty eight plus thirty two is one sixty plus eight. And then we had five. So we've got one ninety two, one sixty eight. We need five and a zero. So we zero 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 one zero one. Slash 26 is the mask we were given right here. So let's draw a line where 26 is at. Right there, right? So what's to the right of that line? Those bits. So this is our subnet mask. And here we have our host bits. So the first question, or part of the question, was how many hosts per subnet can we get? So with this many host bits, we already know how many hosts per subnet we can get, right? 64. No, 26. Yeah, yeah, 64, 2 to the 6, right? Well, 63, actually. No, because you'll have the 0. So 64. It's 64. You can have 64. <laughs> right. So 64 we'll just say 64 hosts per subnet, right? Right. Okay. So now the question is, we want to know how many subnets we can have. Two to the 26. But those aren't all subnet bits. Oh, that's right. So how do we define where the subnet bits are? Yeah, how would you do that without knowing the host? Oh, because the maximum number of, you use that as the, the number of hosts? You, would you use the total well, number of hosts? Well, it doesn't matter how many hosts we have. Is our subnet tell us how many network bits we have? Well, no, that's right, you only use the, the host for the Think subnet about mask. when we wanted to find the subnet bits, we had to draw two lines, right? Yeah, right. We drew the mask. What was the other line? Network bits. The other line was the subnet bits. Well, the, the well, network bits. But what defined change. where that line was at? The subnet mass that they gave the, the original the network major number. network number. Okay, so if we were going to use a 192 address for our LAN, what is the default mask for this network number? It's nice 26. Oh no, because of the, the classes, right? right? It's a class. A class B, isn't it? B. Yeah, because you can. Look, it starts okay. with 110. No, it's class C. Right, 192 is a class C address. So what mask is always given to a class C address? The 2552. Yeah, it's it's uh, no, it's three, it's three. Um, it's three. You know what I'm trying to say. The, the three two five five. It's yeah, three two five five. So it's three octets. Right. Work. So. It's, so the okay, subnet, that's the word I was looking for. Subnet mask. So the original mask is there, right? Right. Which would mean that these are all network bits, and this is our subnet bits. So how many subnets can we have? Four. There's only two bits there. Right. We can have four. 
So you have to know the class of address wow, that the a, original right, network That's why I taught you guys the classes of address. But see, couldn't you tell that from the mask that they gave you? Because the mask, the original mask that they gave you, the 26, um, that's the original mask that they gave you for, for that network. No, this is the mask for the subnet that we're dealing with. Oh, because it says how many, wait a minute. But it says, that, can you get from the network, how many subnets and those per subnet can you get from this network number with this mask? Because, I mean, that original mask they gave you has to be from the same class as the, the network that they gave you, doesn't it? Well, here's the thing. To figure out the number of subnets, we need two different masks, right? We need... <clears throat> The, the major mask and then the subnet mask. So that's the subnet mask. So this mask. has to be the subnet mask because if that's the major mask, then we don't have a subnet mask. Remember when we had like the, we had like See, three things that's what was confusing me because when we're doing subnetting, you can't figure out the subnet mask without knowing how many hosts you got there. Right? Right. So, you, so that's what, why this is confusing me. Um, because they have to, if they're going to only give you the network number, aren't they going to have to give you the original mask with it too? Isn't that what you've been doing on the problems? You give us the network number and then the, the right. subnet mask? But that's because... Because yeah. we're doing those problems. Because we're doing those problems. So technically so when you see a question like this, the mask there is not necessarily the original The mask, mask. here is the mask for the subnets. <clears throat> the mask you want to use is the, ma the classful mask. And so if we so don't if know we what class that IP address you're in, we're just all zero. What can you not determine we're from that without knowing the class? Host. What? If they would have given us the original yeah. mask, yeah. I thought he was talking to you. Um, yeah, exactly. What can you not determine from not knowing the class? Why do you have to know the class? Okay, so this math, this is the subnet mask okay. that they gave us here. Okay. We need this mask comes from what class of address we have. Okay. So we can't get the subnet bits until we know where both of these lines fall. Okay. So and this you won't one is know the mask, where the and this is the class mask. And you won't know where the class mask goes unless you memorize the classes. Right. Okay. Yeah, but but the deal is. Yes. You're looking at the mask number, right? Yeah. Would you like me to repeat the address? Yes. So that's how, how you can tell it's a 192. Like, the range for class 3 is a 1-0. Well, okay, so they use the usable so button. Right, that's it. Right. 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 Right.
How are we going to figure this out? First, you have to find the network number. First, we have to find the network number. So, how do we find the network number? And together, the same. Right, we're going to and the mask and the number they gave us. There's three octets at 255. So, that's what we've got. If we do an and. <laughs> Then what are we going to get? 117.22. Everything but zero at the end. Okay. <coughs> this is our network number. We know we have a slash 24 mask that gave us that. So what would be the broadcast number? Not 245. At the end. Right, because everything after here is going to be a 1. And then the question is, what is the valid host range? So the usable range is going to be the answer once we figure it out. So yeah, be one, 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 seven dot one. Yes, I did that in my head. I got it right. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Did you get that? Yeah. So all of these questions. Yeah are just trying to extract specific information from the same process we've been doing every time. I mean, even if you saw one of these questions and had no clue what to do, and all you did was fill out a normal chart like we've been doing where you get the network number, use a range, and broadcast, then you can take all this information that you have and look what is the question, so it says valid host range. Oh, well, I already had that information. 